In this live self-defense cane training video, you're gonna learn how to use the self-defense cane that could save your life. Start with it in your hand. You're gonna do this warm-up motion. This is a simple spin. Your hand is mostly closed. You're not squeezing though. You have to let it move through your hand. Your purpose of this spin is to get the body warmed up, to build callus in your hand so your hand moves smoothly along your cane when you get it to a protected position. From here, you're gonna bring it over your body and back. This is also gonna to start to get your heart rate up believe it's good if you're fighting fit. The more fit you can become, the better you are at defending yourself. Now, this is also going to help with timing and distance, spatial awareness, but it's not necessarily a self-defense move by itself. After you do this for 30 seconds in one hand, you're going to put it in the other hand. And same thing, your hand is here. You're going to go forward. Hello, Eric. It's good to see you. You're spinning forward. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. Once you're ready, you're gonna go over and back. This over and back message or motion is like a slap across the face and then a backhand. Hello, David David's in Northern Ireland. David's good to see you. I think we're headed to Ireland this summer. You're going over and back, stomach up and in, abs tight, turn your shoulders, turn your hips. Once you've done that for 30 seconds, you should be properly warmed up. We're gonna go into, hello, Doug. Doug's also here. Up and down, but you start to get some power in your legs. Now, if you can't do this because you're confined to a chair, then don't do it. Just skip this part. But if you can, this is a good way to get more mobility. Start to build power. All the strikes come from the ground up when you're standing. But you're just going up and down using your cane and your arms to assist this motion so you can get more range of motion, more power in your legs, lean out faster, build more muscle, become more explosive in the strikes that you need with a self-defense cane that could save your life. I'm going to do that now starting with an off-the-shoulder angular strike coming down and striking. Think about hitting his temple, his jaw, his neck, his shoulder. This one basic striking motion. I want you to do this over and over again, starting slowly and gradually, faster and faster, and putting some pressure on your grip so that when you hit someone for real for self-defense, it's not the first time you've moved that quickly. Once you've done that for about 30 seconds, bring it off of the other shoulder. Other hand always stays up. You can do the standing or sitting. And again, you want it in front of your body, between you and the threat. Getting into this position is very simple. If your hand were here, you can lift it, and let your hand slide. That's the purpose, again, of all that spinning at the beginning, or simply slide your hand down the front. And then as you pick it up, you're in this protective position. Once you've done those first two motions, marry them, put them together, coming off of one shoulder, and then off the other shoulder, but always off the shoulder. I want your stick in front of you. You have to fight from behind your cane. For this walking cane to be able to save your life, it has to be able to hit its target. And if you're up here, you're gonna miss your target. You're gonna hit too weak. It's not gonna have much power. They're gonna close that distance. You're gonna wrap around. You have to come here. Uh, David asked, can we modify a standard walking cane, medical cane? Absolutely, that's why this walking cane, the self-defense cane, could save your life. This is a Cane Masters cane. There's a link below if you wanna see what these are. It's that first link. But it doesn't have to be a Cane Masters cane. It can be any standard walking cane that you can use. Slide your hand down the front, get into a better position, make your body a smaller target by stepping behind your stick, and then strike one, strike two. The third strike and the fourth strike just come over and back. And again, I want you to start slowly, gradually, using your shoulder and hips, turning for that fast, powerful, explosive strike. This is made out of hickory or oak. You can have this made out of oak or hickory. This is an inch in diameter. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, what's better, short staff or cane? Al asked. I think uh, my preference is the cane because you can take it with you places you cannot take the short staff. The short staff I like 
because it's long and you can slide it from one hand to the other. You can do that with this too. But the other advantage of this is this crook. This crook is designed, this here, right? You can catch the neck and pull them in. You can catch the arm and pull them. You can go down to the leg, rip them off the ground. Or you can stick this hard tooth into, Red Dog asked how many cameras have I destroyed? Um, I use my phone and I've destroyed three phones so far by smashing them as I'm sure you would Im were imagining with my stick, either a cane, mostly the bow staff. More, the, more than that, I've destroyed these tripods here. You see in the mirror. Yeah, so the hook is, is a very effective uh, tool, especially this be beveled edge here. This is a hard piece of oak. That is not sharp at all, but if you take this with two hands and you rake it, across his face, you're gonna pull his nose off, you're gonna pull his eye out for self-defense. His teeth will come out of his mouth for self-defense. You can stick it in the ear, you can stick it into the neck, into all that muscle, all those tendons, all that, uh, those nerves in there. You can stick it up, reach on his back and rip him, pull him down. If you're sitting in a wheelchair or you're sitting on the bench, the park bench, and someone comes up and starts messing with you, you can reach up, stick it in their back, put it in the back of their head in that pulling motion, which you're very strong. It's a very strong motion for most people because you're using those big back muscles to pull. That's gonna create a lot of damage. You can stick that into the ribs between the ribs there. There are thin pieces of muscle, a lot of fat for a lot of people. You reach in there, get a handful of that fat and muscle for self-defense and just rake, right? Rip it across for self-defense, amen. That's the truth. All right. From this position, your hand slides down the front and get in a better position, staying behind your cane. You have angle one, angle two, you have these horizontal strikes, and then you have this vertical strike coming straight down on top of his head. And I like to have you practice them in combination. Hello, G. Carlton. Not because you have to fight in combination, but I want you to get used to doing multiple strikes. One, two, the fight's not over till you win, and usually it's gonna take more then one strike, it might take two, might take 10, might take 10,000. The point is you keep fighting until you go home safe. And you can do them in any order. They don't have to be this order. This just, this is a flow drill. This allows you to disguise repetition, to do it over and over again. Coming angle, angle, horizontal, horizontal, vertical, keeping it simple, put it in the other hand, angle, angle, Vertical, vertical, horizontal. You can also do this upward angle. I do teach that a lot, which is the opposite. If you were to come down, then you'd come up, come over, come back. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven strikes in one combination. Put in the other hand, same thing. You're gonna get your heart rate up. Start to switch from side to side. And again, if you have to do this in a wheelchair because you're confined to a wheelchair, this still works, do it. If you have to do this sitting on the edge of the bed, then do it. And if there's some motions that don't work for you, don't do them. Take what you can use and the rest, don't worry about it. Now, thrusting. One of my favorite techniques with the walking cane for self-defense is a simple thrust. From here, I pick it up and I thrust. Your goal is to extend that arm, Turn your shoulders to get reach, get more power, take a little step with it. Now you've got knockout power and go right through his soul for self-defense. Before you hit his soul, you're gonna hit his nose or his eyes or his teeth or his throat for self-defense or his solar plexus. Staying in the center line of the body. He's not gonna walk through your cane with his face. That stops him so you can hit him. One, two, one, two. Just practice off the floor, slide it, one, two. In this position, you step back. Hey, you're getting too close, back up. You give him a verbal command, don't come any closer. He does, you have to defend yourself. From here, one, one, and then do all those combinations. Three, four, five, add one, right into the middle of his nose, using this hard bar of oak, smashing the nose, smashing the teeth for self-defense, going through his eyes, pushing him back like you're doing push-ups. Start it in the other hand, slide it down. Hey. Practice your, practice your words, too. Stop. Back up. You're too close. He keeps coming. You know, you'll say, I will defend myself. Whatever you have to say. Strike. One, 
two, go through those, all those different angles of attack, end with this, and then that. Remember that rake, where you're raking it across his face, you're sliding, pulling the skin off of his head? Do that as a final motion, and then step in almost like a rifle butt attack, and smash him again. And if you want to, one of my favorites is letting go of the backhand and following through with this dropping attack, right? Coming down here, smash, rifle butt, he's right here now, and then down. Smash, rifle butt, and down. You put those together, you've got a nice combination that's gonna get your heart rate up, it's gonna help you get fighting fit, lean out a little bit faster, step in, smash, rake, smash, we've got the rake, rake, smash, boom, drop him. If you hit him on the top of his head and you knock him out, his operating system gets turned off, falls to the ground. Uh, thank you, David. David said another great tutorial. But I just want you to build combinations. That's the point of this video. When you learn how to use a self-defense cane that could save your life, slide it down, step with a thrust, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, rake, thrust, drop. And you can call that your kata. A lot of people ask me for katas all the time. I'll make you a kata, but that could be your kata. I like, instead of katas, I like to think of combinations. What combinations in a flow drill, there's one angle, one or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, rake is 10, step in and rifle butt, and then drop them with that one. You can even turn that up and bring that up between his legs and drop him that way. Another great way to start is popping with this, turning your wrist, bending your elbow, lifting your arm, all at the same time. Those three joints in combination allow this to come off the floor wicked fast. Think about hitting him between the legs, hitting him in the chin. Maybe he's reaching out to punch or, or grab or uh, stab you with something. Smash that arm and then a two-handed thrust. Your other hand, grabs it real quick, thrust, and then you can turn your shoulder. This one is extremely powerful with this long, you've got reach advantage, that's longer than his arm, that's longer than his knife. From here, snatch it up, thrust here, pull, rake. Bring that rake back across, slide it down, there's the thrust, and bring it down. Oh, thank you. See, I said you're in your 70s, this kind of training helps. It's my pleasure, thank you for training with me. I really appreciate that. One, two, oh, it's my birthday today. I started my push-up challenge. I told you about it a little bit a while ago. I'm gonna do a thousand push-ups a day. I'm halfway there for the next 52 days. So that's 52,000 push-ups, 52 days, unless I get injured, which I do a lot of things not to get injured. You try to have to do it smart, in a smart way, a lot of stretching, a lot of countering exercises, pull-ups and pull-downs and stuff for the back. Thrust, but my point in telling you that it's my birthday is to say thank you for training with me on my birthday, my favorite thing to do. People ask me all the time, you taking your birthday off? Never, <laughs> not until I'm dead. But my favorite thing to do is work out and to do martial arts on my birthday. Thank you, David. David says happy birthday. So if you follow through to the end, you watch this all the way through on my birthday, I wish you happy birthday. Awesome, Jeff says he'll do 52 a day for a thousand days. However you get there, Jeff, doesn't matter as long as we keep moving and we get there. Um, yeah, Garen says 22 push up a day challenge. 22 push ups a day came about when they, they discovered this horrific statistic saying that 22 um, uh, military veterans, I'm a veteran, but I couldn't think of the name. I'm not a, I'm not a combat veteran though. I always like to say that people, um, you know, pe people who, who've served like me, and have done a lot of things, but you didn't get to serve in combat, we, have, we feel funny about it. We're technically veterans, but I feel like, and, and I'm not taking anything away from anybody else who feels that way. Just, you know, um, the, our wounded warriors, our soldiers who went to war, because I've got so many friends who did that, who have PTSD and they, they have a hard time transitioning to the, the, the civilian world uh, because of the lack of structure and a lot of, a million other reasons. And so they hurt themselves, 22 a day, we're killing them. So I think it's more now, sadly. I think it's like 27 or 32. But um, I haven't done 22 push-ups since I was probably a kid, meaning that I've done hundreds of push-ups a day 
at least since the Marine Corps light, lit my fire. I had this weird, funny uh, sergeant, uh, drill instructor who'd pull off his hat and in his hat he had an imaginary, it's called a cover for those Marines who are cringing right now. He'd pull off his, his, his campaign cap, his cover, and inside he would look in there and it would say uh, how many push-ups I owed him. And it was always like 50,000, 80,000, some imagine, he made it up. And, uh, and uh, so I did a lot of push-ups. And the third day of training in boot camp, we had some, uh, obst it was an obstacle course, and I was a squad leader, so I had to demonstrate it. And I did it over and over. And every time I would come walking back, because I was tired, and this, the captain of our, our company was there, and he calls me over, and he's screaming in my face. I can still remember, I can't see their eyes because the way they were carrying the hat. I just remember his lips and spit coming out in my face, and he's yelling at me, you're going to go do that again, this time you better run. And I thought he meant just run through faster and do it faster. So I did. I kept doing the obstacle course all the way over and under, through, and then up the ladder, or the, the rope, ding, 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 and down. My hands, skin's coming off my hands, eyelids coming out of my boots, and uh, from all the effort and the work, and then I walked back because I was tired, and I didn't understand he meant run back. And he thought I was doing it on purpose, and he starts to yell at me, calls up my drill instructors over, and only those of you in the Marine Corps will appreciate this, he makes them do push-ups while I stand there and watch. Then he walks away, <laughs> and then they get up, and, they, and uh, the senior drill instructors, they, they act, it's all an act. He's acting embarrassed, he's screaming in my face and cussing me out. They say, don't cuss at you, that's a lie. And he punches me right in the neck. They say, don't punch you, and that was a lie too. I don't know if they still do, but they did back then. These guys were all Vietnam vets. And uh, he says, 300 push-ups. And I dropped down, I did 300 push-ups in a row, and without thinking about it, because you're in this weird mental state when you're in boot camp. I hope that's still the same. But later that night, when we were in the rack, the bed, the, the guide, he, he, was, he was above the drill instructors. I was the first drill, or not drill instructor, uh, squad leaders. I was the first squad leader. And he said, hey, man, you just did 300 push-ups today. I've never seen that before. And I realized that's when I learned the first time about mind over matter. Like our body limits us dramatically. We think we can't do it. You think you've reached your limit. You still have twice as much. 300 times more in your body than you realize. And your body's telling you you can't. Your mind's telling your body you can't. It's not real. Your body can do so much more. That's why fighting and putting stress on you when you fight and learning how to stress test everything is so important in self-defense. Because when you, when you go from zero to 180 heartbeats a second during a confrontation, you better be able to have some training to switch into it. And so when I, hello, I'll cover the cat. So anyway, so I had done maybe 50 push-ups in my life up to that point in a row. And at one time with a guy with thinking I was about to get killed, the guy said 300 push-ups, I had 300 push-ups in a row without thinking about it. I probably could have gone all day. And that's when I realized later, looking back, wow, those first many times you realize your mind limits your body. It's not the other way around. Your body can do a million times more than you ever think it can. If you get your head out of the way, that's where ego, ego's first. Get the ego out of the way, get your fears and doubts out of the way. Learn to discipline, don't look for motivation. Learn for daily, or look for daily discipline. Brush your teeth every day, eat healthy, do your push-ups, make your bed. Daily discipline, not motivation, will get you anywhere you want to go. You guys have been awesome. Thanks for working out with me on my birthday, and I'll see you guys in a little bit.